access to finance. How can you find more money? Now, to understand the need for access to finance, I need to show you this diagram. You start at zero. You haven't spent any money, you haven't made any money. But as you start your business, um, you need to invest. Maybe you need to buy a new camera. Maybe you need to buy uh, a car to go around and do um, maybe some photo shooting. Maybe you need to buy a computer and install the software and buy the software that is expensive. So, and the, the line, the red line goes down and you're spending money. And you need all that to even start doing anything. And when you reach the peak, maybe that is when you, the first customer comes. You have already spent a lot of money before you get the first customer. So you are on minus, and that is called the valley of death. If you quit there, all the money that you spent is lost. You can recover some of it if you sell your camera back or if you sell your computer back, but you will never sell it at the price that you bought. So you will still make a loss. So better to aim to go back up. And, but how can you cover this valley of death? This money. Maybe you don't have this money because to buy the camera and the computer and the software and the car and some other things, you need maybe $5,000 and you don't have it. That is where you maybe can approach and take a loan. You can approach someone, an investor, you can borrow. The first ones to approach are friends and family. But banks, angel investors are also there. We will have a look at that. So access to finance. Um, there are different ways how creative people work. One is you are paid per project. So that is one example. Renzo is the one who uh, designed the shard. The shard is the tallest building in London. He was paid per project. He was paid per project. And a lot of creative people are paid like that. No external capital is needed uh, for him. Well, and I believe he has the computer and the software he needs for his design and he sketched the, the architecture. But he is paid per project. So, but can he grow? Does he have an architecture firm? Hmm? Maybe, maybe he has, but still it's his talent in this case. Other people, on the other hand, are paid per hour. They don't need external capital either. Huh? This is the hourly rate of DJs in 2015, and there you have number one, Calvin Harris. He is charging $350,000 to $550,000 per hour. One hour of his DJing costs that much money. So he is charging per hour. How can he do that? Well, he's famous. He's famous. Does he need capital? Maybe not. Would we want to have a few other Calvin Harris doing the same as him? Maybe he would but he hasn't done that. So, if you're not in that, in that position, if you're not like one of them that famous, you might want to consider an angel investor. Who are angel investors? Angel investors are people who understand what you do and understand the potential you have to grow. Remember, 8.9% is the growth in the creative industries in general. So, and that is yours too. You can grow even faster. And what they do, they offer you some money, $10,000 or even more, because they see potential for growth. What do they expect? They expect five times return in five years. So if they give you $10,000, in five years, they want to get back $50,000. But how do they get it back? They get it back because your business will grow just like that, will become five times bigger. Now, think about it this way. If now you have $1,000 and you make 10% interest or profit from what you do, from that investment, after one year you have $1,100. But if one angel investor comes and gives you $100,000 in exchange of 80% of your business, and then you still make 10%, how much money you make after one year? Or how much that increases for 80%? 20000 20,000 compared to 1,000 is more. So sometimes it is worth it to bring in external investors and give away some part of your ownership in exchange for higher potential for growth, higher growth. The other good thing with the, with the angel investors is they have business expertise. They know how business works. Maybe they have other related businesses 
they can, they can connect you to them, so with them you can do more and you can grow faster. The whole idea of external finance is not a debt. Debt can be a good thing if it helps you to grow. If you take it alone and you pay maybe 5% uh, to the loan or to the bank or to the angel investor, but then you are making 20% profit, what is 5% compared to 20%? You're still making 15% that you keep after you pay the 5%. Hmm? So a loan can help you grow much faster. And that is the whole idea of uh, approaching and accessing external finance. Another option uh, used generally by creative people is crowdfunding. I'm sure you have heard about Kickstarter, you have heard about Indiegogo, where a, a lot of uh, gamers or game designers, uh, music uh, creative people or, or other designers or creative uh, industry experts uh, post their projects and asking for funding. The good thing is, you don't need the actual product before you know if people are willing to pay for it or not. You can put it there, all you need is maybe a three minute video, a campaign, you need to invite some people and after four days you will know. If they fund it, you have the money and you can make it happen. If they don't, maybe your idea was not so good. So you need to drop it. Crowdfunding, it's a good opportunity, but it's not easy. To design that campaign, to plan it, to invite uh, so many backers that are good and they fund it, and to create that kind of, and to maintain relationships with them, uh, to give back the rewards, for example, to give back the game to them, to deliver the game they expect you to design on time, and all that, require you to have good project management skills to make that happen, but at the same time, money management skills and also PR public relationship skills. So crowdfunding is a good opportunity because maybe it's less rigorous than banks. Uh, banks are experts or angel investors are experts. When you go and ask money from them, they will really analyze your potential. Crowdfunding is about the crowd and the crowd is not an expert. So you might be able to, uh, to navigate the crowd uh, or in a way sell an idea or inspire the crowd, work on their feelings rather than or on their financial mind. But on the other hand, a crowd is a crowd and is difficult to manage and it has other challenges. So consider the right tool and channel for accessing finance carefully. What determines success and bargaining power? Burn rate, time to out of cash and uh, time to close. How quickly can you return the money? How close are you to getting to a point where you are out of cash and out of business? And how quickly can you close the loan or the deal? These things are very important when you approach investors.